Hello, it's me. I'm Hana. I wrote the Adult Bible Study Guide, the, the co- second quarter of 2023. The title is the Three Cosmic Messages. It has usually 13 lessons. I'm going to read lesson 12. This is the part 2, the Seed of God and the Mark of the Beast. I already read uh, le- from uh, lesson t- uh, 11, there are part 1, and this one is the part 2. Yeah, so that's why I'm, I'm reading outside the rainy day, but I looked around my uh, yard, so cold, take, take out the weeds, I read for it. This week's study, Revelation 12, 6, 14, Daniel 7, 25, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, 4, and Deuteronomy 6, 8, Deuteronomy 11, 18, Exodus 20, 8 through 11. Memory text comes from Revelation 13, 10. He who lives into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. In the 15th century, the uh, pediment valleys high in the Alps, Alps of northern Italy were home to the wilderness, a people determined to stay faithful to their understanding of the Bible. As a result of their steadfast loyalty to Christ, they were fiercely persecuted in AD 1488. The wardens in the valley of the valley of Lois were brutally murdered by the Roman Church for their faith. Another wave of Persecution came in the 17th century when the Duke of Savoy Savoy sent an army of 8,000 into their territory and demanded that the local populace quarter his troops in their homes. They did as he requested, but this was a strategy to give the soldiers easy access to their victims. On April 24, 1655, at 4 a.m., a signal was given for the massacre to begin. To massacre to begin. This time, the death toll was more than 4,000. History. Unfortunately, it's often repeated. The mark of the beast prophecy is about the final link in an ungodly chain of religious persecution that goes back through the ages, like the persecutions of the past. It is designed to force everyone to conform to a certain set of beliefs and an approved system of worship. As always, though, God will have a people who will not capitulate. Capitulate. So we need a prayer, though, which time we become to repeat like this. Anyway, the seed of God can compare with the mark of the beast. Yeah, Sunday on deadly wound. As we have already studied, the beast powers of Revelation 13 and 14 represent a worldwide system of false worship. But there is more. Read Revelation 13, 5, Revelation 12, 6, 14, and Daniel 7, 25. How long would this power dominate the religious landscape in the previous centuries? The beast would continue for a specific duration of time in history. In symbolic time prophecies, a prophetic day equals a literal year. In number 1434, numbers 1434, we read for every day a year, uh, applying the Bible principle of counting a day for a year. Again, God says, 
I have appointed the each day for a year. Ezekiel 4 6, this principle has repeatedly proven itself accurate in an interpreting biblical time prophecies, uh, such as the 70 weeks of Daniel 9 24 through 27, calculating the time period mentioned in Revelation 13 5 of 42 months. Uh, with 30 days in a month, uh, we come up with uh, 1,260 prophetic days or literal years. The ancient uh, calendars regularly had uh, 360 days per year. In the 4th century, the Roman Emperor Constantine legalized uh, Christianity throughout the empire. When he moved his capital in AD 332, Byzantium to unite the eastern and western parts of his empire, it, it left a leadership vacuum in Rome. The Pope then feared this void. He became not only a powerful religious leader, but also a political force to be reckoned with in Europe. In A.D. 538, Just, Justinian and the Roman emperor officially granted the Roman bishop the role of the defender of the faith. The medieval church exercised great influence from A.D. 538 to A.D. A.D. 1798, including in the terrible persecution mentioned in the introduction to this week's study, Napoleon's general, Berthier, took the Pope captive in A.D. 1798 in exact fulfillment of the prophecy. Berthier and his army captured the Pope Pius VI uh, and uh, unceremoniously unceremoniously removed him from the paper throne. The blow to the papacy was serious, but according to Revelation 13, 12, the deadly wound would be healed, and the world would hear more from this power a lot more. Think about how amazing biblical prophecy is and how it reveals to us God's knowledge of future events. What should this fact teach us about why we can trust the Lord's promises, even the, the ones we don't yet see fulfilled? Monday, the falling away. Read the second Thessalonians 2, 3, 4, 9 through 12. What does Paul predict about the last days? What identifying marks does he give for the beast, the Antichrist power? The Apostle Paul warns the Christian community of falling away from the truth of God's word. He is concerned about the seeds of apostasy already present in the New Testament church, which would flourish in the coming centuries before the second coming of Christ. A counterfeit gospel would come into the church, distorting the word of God. Satan is the one who is behind this apostasy. He is the true man of sin who desires to exalt himself above all that is called God and sits in the temple of God. 2 Thessalonians 2.4 but the great deceiver works through human agencies to accomplish his purpose. purposes. The, the identifying characteristics in Daniel and Revelation reveal that the little horn of Daniel 7, the beast of Revelation 13 and 14, and the lower less one of 2 Thessalonians 2 represent the same entity. The SD Bible commentary states it this way, a comparison with Daniel's prophecy of the blasphemous power that succeeds that of pagan Rome and with John's word, picture of the leopard-like beast. 
reveals many similarities between the three de descriptions of the little horn, the beast power, and the lawless one. This leads us to the conclusion that Daniel, Paul, and John are, John are speaking of the same power, the papacy, volume 7, page 271. It is extremely important to remember that Bible prophecy is describing a system of religion that has compromised God's word, substituted human traditions for the gospel, and drifted away from biblical truth. These prophecies are given by a God of incredible love to prepare people for the coming of Jesus. They are rebuked to apostate religious organizations that have departed from God's word and not necessarily the people in them. See Revelation 18.4, our message is about a system that has deceived millions, though deceived these people are much loved by Christ. Hence, we must treat them accordingly. Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Matthew 7, 12. How must we apply this principle in dealing with the theme of the beast powers in Revelation 13 and 14? Tuesday, Satan's final strategy. Surveys reveal a dear lack of trust in institutions and the governments. Millions wonder where is there someone who is morally fit to lead the world. Revelation's prophecies identify the beast power as the one who, under the auspice of, of a religious political union will be the power believed fit to fear this role. Read Revelation 17, 12 through 14. How does John describe these final scenes of Earth's history? What powerful contrast is seen here? There are three significant points John makes in this passage. First, the political powers have one mind and, and give their power and authority to the beast. Second, this conglomerate of error makes war against Jesus and Lamb. Third, in Earth's last war, Christ and his followers are triumphant. The beast does not win. Jesus does. Amen. Have you ever wondered what strategy the devil might have used to unite the nations? History often repeats itself. Yeah, we, we, we discover valuable lessons from the collapse of the Roman Empire when the Germanic invasions, um, Germanic, uh, Germanic invasions from the north uh, threatened Western Europe, the Roman Emperor Constantine turned to religion. The authority of the, of the church combined with the power of the state became the very instrument Constantine needed. The continual strengthening of the sanctity of Sunday in the 4th century was a calculated political and religious move to unite the empire at the time of crisis. Constantine wanted his empire united and the Roman church wanted it covered. Covered. The renowned historian Arthur Weiger states it clearly. The church made a sacred day of Sunday largely because it was the weekly festival of the sun, for it was a defin definite Christian policy to take over the pagan festivals and endeared and, and endeared to the people by tradition and give them Christian significance. The paganism in our Christianity, New York, G.P. 
Putnam's Son. Putnam's Sons, 1928, page 145. At the time of great crisis, so when all the world is scared, hurting, and fearful, people will be desperate for someone to bring some stability, stability and protect, protection. This is this is how tyranny has arisen in the past, and there is no reason to think that it could not happen again. According to prophecy, something will bring about these final events, though it's hard to know how all this could unfold. The world has already seen how great changes can come, and very quickly too. Though we don't know details about what is coming, we need to be ready for whatever does come. Wednesday, the mark of the beast. <clears throat> Read Revelation 14.9 and compare it to Revelation 14.12. Where is the mark of the beast placed? Deuteronomy 6.8, Deuteronomy 11.18. What two characteristics distinguish God's people from those who receive the mark of the beast? One group worships the beast, and one keeps the commandments of God, which includes the force, the one commandment, the beast power through to change, and has the faith of Jesus. That's the contrast to working through the sea and land beasts. The devil attempts to undermine God's authority by attacking the heart of worship, namely the Sabbath. The mark of the beast is placed either in the forehead or the hand. Uh, the forehead is a symbol of the mind where conscience, reason, and judgment are located. The hand in contrast is a symbol of actions and deeds. The day is coming and possibly sooner than we think that laws will be passed restricting our religious liberty. Those who con conscience, conscientiously, con conscientiously follow the word of God and keep the true Sabbath of the Lord will be leveled as labored as opposing unity and the good of society. Those who honor the Bible Sabbath will be denounced as enemies of law and order as breaking down the moral restraints of society causing uh, anarchy and corruption and calling down the judgment of God upon the earth. Their conscience, conscience tears Conscientious uh, scruples, uh, scruples will be pronounced uh, ob obstinacy, st stubbornness, and contempt of authority. They will be accused of disaffection toward the government. Ellen G. White, The Great Controversy, page 592, 592, The Church of Rome claims that Sunday is the mark of its uh, ecclesiastical authority. Of course, the Catholic Church claims that the change was her act, and the act is a mark of her ecclesiastical power and authority in religious matters. The American Catholic Quarterly Review General January 1883, Revelation predicts that in the future, at the time of international crisis, our world will face some kind of radical political, social, religious, and moral transformation in which Sunday keeping will be enforced and then will become the mark of the beast again. How all this unfolds, we have not been told. The scripture gives us 
uh, only broad outlines, but enough to show us that the great controversy is going to climax around the issue of worshipping either the beast or the creator, and that the Seventh-day seventh Sabbath will play a central role in what ways uh, has humanity always been divided along the lines of being on either God's side or on Satan's? Why can there be no middle ground? How can we know for sure of just whose side we really are on, are on their middle ground? And third day, the Sabbath test. Even now, perhaps the stage is being set for this impending persecution on June 6, 2012, Pa Benedict XVII uh, made an urgent appeal to more than 15,000 people gathered in St. Peter's Square in Rome at that Sunday must be a day of rest for everyone so people can be free to be with their families and with God by defending Sunday on defense on defense human freedom. This isn't, of course, the same thing as demanding uh, demanding that others keep this day as op opposed to, to the biblical Sabbath, but it does show that uh, the idea of Sunday as the day of rest is definitely a real issue. Sooner or later, laws will be passed and those who con con continue Cons cons consciously, conscientiously follow the word of God and keep the true Sabbath will be labeled as opposing societies, societies, societies' best interests. In this time of crisis, God's faithful people will, by His grace and through His power, stand firm in their convictions to follow him, they will not yield to the pressure. In contrast to the mark of the beast, they will receive the seal of God. Seals were used in ancient times to attest to the authenticity, authenticity of official documents. We would then expect to find God's seal embodied embedded in his law. Ancient seals were a distinctive individualized mark. Isaiah the prophet says, bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. Isaiah 8.16, read Exodus 28-11, what elements of a biblical seal do you find in the Sabbath commandment? How is the Sabbath command different from all the other commandments. The fourth commandment contains three elements of one authentic seal. First, there is the name of the sealer, the Lord your God, Exodus 20, 20, 20 10. Second, there is the title of the sealer, the Lord who made Exodus 20, 11, or the Creator. And third, there is the territory of the sealer, the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. Exodus 20, 11. According to Revelation 7, 1 through 3, the seal of God is placed only on our foreheads, a symbol of our minds. Jesus respects our freedom of choice. He invites us to let him shape our minds by his Holy Spirit so that we cannot be moved from the anchor of our faith in the word of God, Ephesians 4.30. Thus, we understand that the faithful are those who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus, Revelation 14.12, and included in those commandments is the force, the one commandment, the beast power thought to change. Daniel 7.25, what conditions can you see currently developing that could pay, potentially, potentially lead to the restriction of our religious liberty? What obstacles remain as well? Uh, Friday, further thought, uh, 
when prostatism shall stretch, stretch her hand across the gulf to grasp, grasp the hand of the Roman power, when she shall reach over the abyss, abyss to clasp hands, abyss to clasp hands with spiritualism, when under the influence of this threefold union, our country, the United States, shall re repudiate, repudiate every principle of its cons constitution as a protestant, protestant and a republican government and shall make a provision for the pro propaga propaga propagation of paper for falsehoods and delusions, then we may know that the time has come for the marvelous working of Satan and that the end is near. Ellen G. White Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, page uh, 451. We have tended to look, overlook the fact that Sunday is the day of worship of the opposing forces in the storyline of the book of Revelation. Sunday is an extremely important symbol, revealing the unbelievable craftiness and uh, sophistry of the dragon. This change of God's law expresses in one simple action the very essence of the hatred of the dragon against God in the cosmic conflict. It is simplicity is highly de deceptive. The dragon has sought to usurp, usurp God's place in the cosmos by depicting, depicting himself as the true object of worship and arguing that God's law is unjust, that it should be changed. The dragon changed the law and the juncture juncture within the Decalogue, where God is identified as Creator and Redeemer, the only one worthy of worship. Exodus 28 through 11, Deuteronomy 5, CF, and uh, uh, Revelation 4, 11, 5, 9, 13, and 14. The, the change of the law manifests not only the dragon's uh, hatred for the will of the Lord, the law, uh, but it is also his attempt to usurp God's place for, by becoming the object of worship. The universalization of this change in the law uh, would uh, assure him victory. Angel Manuel Rodriguez, the closing of the cosmic conflict, the role of the three angels' message, unpublished manuscript, manuscript, page 53 and 54. Disco two discussion questions. One, though living in anticipation, even expectation of final events, why must we be careful about not getting into fanaticism? Uh, fanaticism, date setting, or speculating beyond what has been revealed to us through inspiration. What are the dangers of doing this and what have been the results when the expected events have not unfolded when and uh, how people have said they would happen to why we must <clears throat> avoid the dangers depicted in the previous discussion question. How do we respond to those who, who say that our scenario about the mark of the beast and persecution cannot happen because it just doesn't seem possible given the current state of the world? Why is this line of reasoning though on the surface seemingly sensible, really not sensible at all. After all, look at how quickly great changes can come to the world. Yeah, there are inside the story school saves. By Andrew McChinney, a, a lux luxury car pulled up at a Seventh-day Adventist Elementary School on the first day of classes in Ukraine. 
two children carrying bouquets of flowers emerged from the car together with their parents. Ukrainian children often present teachers with flowers on the first day of school. We want our children to study at your school, the pa- father told the school, told the school principal. I'm afraid that that's impossible. The principal replied, we don't have room. The father persisted. We will buy new desks and chairs for all the students and pay double the tuition. He said, please uh, let our children study. The principal wondered whether the father's expectations might be too high. You know that we don't have government uh, accreditation accreditation to hold the final exams, she said. Your kids would have to take them at the public school. There's Mm -hmm. no problem. The mother said, we will help you get accreditation. You know, this is a Seventh-day Adventist school, the principal said. Adventists are dismissed as a a sect by many people in the former Soviet Union, but the father knew it was an Adventist school and he was not deterred. deterred. Yes, and we want our children to study here, he said. The mother explained that the family had vacationed at the Black Sea a few weeks earlier and the children had made new new friends from the school. Every evening, the children had excitedly told their parents about the school and pleaded to go. Then the mother handed her business card to the principal. She was a city judge. Her husband was a high-ranking military officer. The children entered the second and the third grade at the school, and they immediately loved it. But as the weeks passed, they began begging their parents to read Uncle Arthur, Uncle Arthur's baddest bedtime stories to them, just as their classmates' parents were reading to them. The mother told the children to ask the teacher to sell the books to them. Then I will read to you every night. She said the children bought the books and she read to them every night. The month, pa- the month passed and the children asked to go to Sabbath school and church. The parents took them every Sabbath the next summer. A year after the family first heard about Adventist while on their Black Sea vac- vacation, uh, both the mother and father were baptized. Amen. Yeah. This comes from Adventist education is closely connected with the mission of the church, said Ivan Lyapolov, pictured education director of the Euro Asia division, whose territory includes Ukraine. You cannot separate Adventist education and Adventist mission. Wherever schools open, the church grows. Thank you for your mission offerings that support the Seventh-day Adventist education worldwide. It provided uh, from the uh, provided by the General Conference Office of Adventist Mission, which uses Seventh School Mission offerings to spread the gospel worldwide. Read new stories daily at AdventistMission.org. Yeah, thank you, Lord. And give us, uh, I, uh, though I'm just a quick, quick uh, reading, but I, I'm uh, touched by the, yeah, the, the God, the prophecies of the Word of God, uh, and also the, it, com- it also, um, reading faster, we, we can quick the more, the, Big pictures also. So the, there are lesson 11 and 12 is the, uh, just uh, part, of, part and 1 and 2. So the, it will be la- go last uh, lesson 13. The title is the, the Glaze. The, oh yeah, I'm sorry here. <laughs> Thank you.
ablaze with the gas glory. Ablaze with gas glory. So um, let's pray the Lord's Prayer. Um, yeah, I want to talk uh, more about this, you know, uh, situations and around the world. That there are lots of sore, you know, problem or the uh, or rise already. We know the because the history repeat uh, exactly similar like that, and there are the politically, economically, you know, the society uh, have uh, lots of problem. Yeah, but, but we will, you know, uh, talk. Yeah, in next time, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the, thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Yeah, it's, we need uh, really the prayer, prayer, and prayer. Yeah, yeah. May God bless all of you and gives you a wisdom from God. And the Holy Spirit will help you too. I see you. May God bless all of you.